<laughs> nice one. Oh man. We are headed to Haleiwa Harbor. It's 4 a.m. We're going to meet up with a fishing guide who's going to take us out on the ocean. Really excited about it. We are about an hour away from this guy. We will see you in a little bit of the harbor. We are here at Haleiwa Harbor. We're looking for this boat here. There's quite a few boats here. So Allison's out there. We found the boat, the Pamela Pearl. You ready for us Oklahoma's yet? Yeah. Nick? Nick. James Boone. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, you too. Alrighty, welcome aboard the Pearl. What is your name? Allison. Allison, Nick, nice to meet you. That's Jay. Jay, what's up, man? Hey. First thing we're gonna do though, we're gonna go out there and catch some bait. Yeah, awesome. Um, the bait we're gonna go catch is macro scads. We call them Opelu. They're like six inches to like a foot long. But we're gonna go out there, get them when the sun is rising, and then put them in our fish tank over there and go feed them to the big fish on awesome. the outside. Let's go, let's go <laughs> fish the fish. Ready. I'm ready, I'm ready. This is like, now I'm in my element. It's like the first time I felt my element. This is being in Hawaii, like about, about ready to catch the fish on a boat. So really, really cool. Nice and comfortable boat. It's got a little cabin down here. Bathroom back there, a couple beds. So they got their rigs. They got their Apalu rigs. They got some Pigas jigs, Nita rigs, trolling hooks. All this trolling stuff, really oh. cool, really cool stuff, man. This is it's a new world. How long have you been on this boat? Uh, for about a year. A year? Yeah, but. I was working in Alaska before this. Oh, where are you? Where at? Commercial fishing in Homer. Homer? Okay. Yeah. I've been there. You've been there? You've been to Homer? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, yeah. You guys go to any processing plant while you're no, there? No, we didn't. No. Did you? Where'd you work for? I was doing the commercial fishing, like okay. salmon, halibut charters. Yeah. But I used to do a set netting, so like we go out in the front of the mouth of the river and then you lay like a hundred yard net. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's crazy. Oh, it's get like big. 50 pound kings inside of it. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, awesome. Alaska fishing out there, it's so different, but it's oh, yeah. it's an experience. I fished out here my whole life. Yeah. My dad's a fisherman, but he's been taking me out on the boat ever since I was a little kid. Oh, little boy. Yeah. Awesome. I fished this whole area, uh, but mostly Kanyoi side, on the east side of the island. Right now we're in the north, north side. We're going to be fishing like 1,000 fathoms, so that's 6,000 feet. 6,000 feet? Yeah. <laughs> not, we're not going to be dropping our reels that deep. But, um, we're going to get everything on the surface. That's wild. These fish out here, they in rough water like this, they need something to shelter on. So the Mai Mai's will sit on like something that's floating in the water. Any kind of fish, actually. That buoy kind of creates like an ecosystem for uh, microplankton little bait fish and stuff and all the predator fish all the time. Nope, just a buoy. That's just it. A buoy. That's crazy. But we got them all along the, all around the island. This one that we're going to go to is like 18 miles out. Do hook up bait. If we hook up bait over here, don't reel them in like too fast because the uh, lips will break, but reel them in just quick enough so the sharks can't get them. Okay. <laughs> We're coming out here. We finally got to the spot on Ketchum Bay. There's a buoy right there in the water, really small. Like Nick was telling us, all it is is a chain going down and that's enough to attract bait fish. Literally just a buoy and a chain. Nick was talking about it creates an ecosystem for these bait fish and fish to be around. And you can see them on the radar. Yeah, you That's see the bait. You see the graph right there. The wow. bait just stacked up right there. Now is that 15? Is that 150 feet or 15 feet? That's 15 fathoms. So it's like 15 fathoms. Yeah, it's like 80 feet, 80 90 feet. feet. But it's pretty stacked up bait over here. Yeah, that's awesome. Jay, are we gonna we're gonna be trolling for the bait, or is it just oh. up and down? Dropping, dropping sabiki rig. It's like we're doing. Right sabiki now. rig. Yeah. Bet. Fighting. You can drop that pole right there. Which one? Yeah, drop it all the way to where the dark blue meets the orange. 
Jump down when you get bit. You just want to hold your rod steady like this. Coming down. All right. Do you move? Do you move it? Maybe? Yep. There you go. Oh, so it's just a little bit. Yeah, they'll set them. They'll set them up on themselves. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, they have super soft then. All right. I don't want to work this area. I feel a bite. These guys like to bite on the drop, and then if you get down to a certain depth and you don't feel them. Oh. I contributed a little bit. Always down there, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Yeah. Crazy. Whoop, whoop. Yeah, pull him right in. Oh, he came off. Oh, he came oh, off. Come on, you older.
Hey Nick, are those your fish catching glasses? The rig in the middle, is that for Marlin? Um, Sorry. pretty much for anything. That's like a small lure. That's like always a 7-inch lure. There's also a 7-inch lure. That's a 9 there. That's kind of like the standard. Um, it's a 12-inch. It's a tough bigger. That one is like the only one that's like specifically for Marlin. Because of the size? Because of the size, yeah. The way it's going to run, too. It's going to make a lot of noise. So when they hit that, does that rubber band break? Oh uh, yeah, that rubber band will snap down. So it's not like the bridge is breaking off. That center rigger up there. Uh, our clips up there are pretty tight. Those guys will make a lot of money when they break free too. And yeah, these two corners will be on rubber bands. So the center and the two corners will be on. Are we at the main ground yet or is this just... We're still in the shallows right now. Um, right here is probably... What, what's that right there? Crab pot. A crab pot? Yeah. Banner crab. Is that a commercial fisherman or is that? That's a commercial, um, commercial pot there. Now would he be selling those crabs here locally or? Yeah. Sometimes it takes them an hour and a half, two hours to feed. 
uh, but they need that cold water, so they need deeper water. Okay. Uh, Mahi Mahi is Wahoos, um, Marlin, everything like that. Uh, they just kind of free roam and whatnot. They'll go wherever the current and the wind blow them. But tunas are kind of the ones that, um, that they need that deeper water. Probably more around like that 300, uh, 3,000 kind of feet, you'll start to get into like tunas. They like that like 6,000, 12,000 kind of feet water. So they'll actually go down 6,000 feet? Uh, they won't go down that deep. The cold water is somewhere around like 300 to 500 feet. Oh, okay. They'll, they'll punch down there and hang out, digest and cool down and then um, locate the next pile of bait and then they'll come up and go haywire and then once they get hot, they'll go back down again. So as far as structure underneath, is this just sand bottom? I believe it's mud bottom. Mud? Yeah. So how far is the Cottonelle Shelf off the, the island here? Here it's nice and close. Here it's about four miles, five miles. Um, on the west end, it's like two miles. And then on the south shore, it's shallow. It's like that 1,200, 1,800 foot for like 14 miles until you punch out and you hit the back and drop off. So where do you sell these fish at? Uh, a lot of local stuff right around Paliva. Um, and we're gonna actually sell it to the big market that's in town, Honolulu. It's called uh, Pier 38, um, the fishing village. Um, but we have the second largest fish market other than Sakiji in Japan. And it's open to the public, so if you guys want to go check it out, um, I believe auction starts at 7 a.m. You just walk in there, uh, they open the back gate. All you need is closed toed shoes, Crocs to wear. Um, yeah, tennis shoes, anything like that. It's kind of cool to go in there because you have a bunch of like old Japanese men and they just kind of real quiet. Yeah, they'll bid and they'll give a they're bid. Just, they're just bidding on individual fish. Yeah, so there's, there's a lot of these buyers out here. Buyers that have um, the guys that actually go and like check quality of fish and buy the fish for them. The wholesalers will have like specific guys that, that know how to check quality, and know how to get good numbers and stuff like that. I have like one guy with like seven different orders and he's just going to spec and he's bidding on what his client sees. And once they buy it, once he buys it, they put his tag on it and then he'll call the wholesaler and they'll come with their truck and pick up all their things. Like that. How much is it, uh, this is for local? Um, a lot of it. Really? A lot of it, yeah. Um, a lot of our long line fish ends up getting exported. Um, a lot of our marlin, at least our striped marlins, I think they said like 60 to 75% of our striped marlins get exported straight to Tsukiji, uh, straight to Japan. How much are some of these fish worth? Right now, well as of our last charter, which was like two days ago, Mai uh, Mai was going from 9 to $12 a pound. And we had average size of our fish that day was probably right at 20 pounds. Now that's just the whole fish is 20 of whole fish, yeah. Um, yellow fin is probably somewhere in the oh, big blind fish. Is that a good sign? Or what does that mean? It's bait. Yeah. They just free roam. Um, now if there was big booby birds above them and they were jumping out of the water like that, that would be hot and hot. That's kind of what Nick's up there looking for right now. I'm going to go help him in a little bit. Grab the other pair of binoculars. Looking? Look for uh, what we call open schools out here right now. A lot of open schools. So, um, you just see those booby birds, they'll be high flying, big white birds. Um, we have brown boobies as well, but they'll be high flying. And they'll kind of do this dance where they'll come down, they'll swoop, and then they'll go back high. And they'll kind of do that whole dance. Um, and there might be one or two, like what we call sushi turns and slapping. Um, that's like telltale, what we call an open school. So they're eating flying fish, they're waiting for the Mai Mai to, to scare the flying fish out of the water, then those birds will come down and swoop them off the top of the water. Same thing, vice versa, the Mai will scare them out of the water and have the birds push the bait back into the water so they can feed. What's the ideal catch for you to sell? Like, what do you want? What are you looking to get? Year round, Mai Mai is always stable. Um, summertime, like, Right now, there's kind of been like an off-season tuna bite. Um, normally, we'll get like the 60, anywhere from like the 40 to like 80 pounders. Uh, yellow fins, we'll call those chibis. Under 100 pounds, we call chibis. Over 100 pounds, we call actual ahis. Uh, but there's been ahis running around lately. Um, but coming in 
the summer, that's what you want to cast. Um, you get the big ones from like the 100 power range to like the 250, 260 going up. Those aren't going to go anywhere from three to last year. They were popping out like $12 a pound. Like $1,200 fish or something. Good. $800, $800. Now, there are guys that do this just like we're doing right now, just to catch fish and sell it. Yeah. yeah. And this is how they do it? Yep. They'll troll out, cover ground. Well, some guys will blast it. Um, the thing about blasting it is you're covering your... You're not fishing ground that are super fishable. Out here, we don't necessarily have fast boats because 200, you have 250 yards outside the harbor, you're in fishable ground. These are the ones you want to see. So these are really called studio turns. Those birds you want to see? Yeah. I have four of them tattooed on my back. Those are what I call the money makers right here. Those guys will always, 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 if you see them just do, doing this in front of the boat, they're normally sitting on above a fish or above a floating debris, uh, something that's super fishable. These guys are just flying down to and they've seen our lures and they just pulled up on us. Okay, they're looking at the lures. Yeah, they're looking at the lures. They're looking at our swivel. They want to try to eat our little swivel. These are like high flyers, they'll swoop. These guys are divers, so they'll fly low. These guys have really poor eyesight. So what they do is they fly low. And he's kind of making his way, but uh, when we get into our, our bird piles out here, once we find a bird pile, uh, you'll see them do a dance like this right across the water. They can't see good, so they smell. They'll smell the fish in the water. Smell the bait fish and stuff. Smell it, wow. They'll actually land on top of the water and then swim down. They can swim down up to like 150 feet and actually go catch bait. So they swim down 150 feet? Yeah, it's all these little black ones flying. Wow. It's going be really fishy right now. Huh? All these birds. Yeah, there's a bird pile up there. You see it? Salt and pepper on the horizon. Yeah, right there. yeah. And then all these birds are going down and form another pile. There's another pile right there. Birds everywhere, bro. Man, these waves are intense, man. I mean, it's it's they're rolling. Rolling, rolling, rolling. I'm not sure if she's sick or not. I don't really want to bother, but she's sick, man. I feel so bad for her. But, uh, man, it is crazy wicked out here. I mean, there's really no words for being out here. And these waves. And they said these waves are pretty average for her. Crazy. Now, how do you catch your skipjacks? Um, smaller lures, stuff like this. Uh, we have two small ones out there already that they'll bite, so we're kind of in good shape. It's kind of our goal from the beginning, try and get a Charlie, what we call a Charlie, and uh, have some bigger stuff out there for anything else that's, that's lurking around. There's so much bait, you never know what's going to be on there. Could be, I mean, any of any one of our projects out here in this bird pile, so.
the lures is for them, pretty for much. Them. Yeah. We have a seven-inch lure out there already. So this is like a three-inch lure. Okay. Yeah, it's just for skipjacks. They kind of like smaller fish to size, so. The thing about smaller lures and the wind, it, the wind will push it way over, huh? So you kind of gotta, you gotta keep it high. I gotta keep it up there with me. Okay. Did you, did you, so yeah, really did, did you see him in front of you, or? Yeah, there's a pile in front of us. And you saw him? Yeah. Birds. Did I got binos upstairs. Oh, okay. Birds and bait fish everywhere. So first things, we're throwing out the mahi-mahi, the wooden mahi-mahi. Now it's going down the bait, the live bait. We just got to a buoy out here. Look at them, they're on the buoy. Oh yeah, see them right there, the blue? Where? Coming right into our bait right now. Oh yeah, yeah, I see them, I see them. Come on, come in. They're coming in. Oh man, that's awesome. You see them all? That's amazing. Right oh wow, look at that. He's on. Right here. No, no, sit down. Sit down. Huh? Stay down there. Oh, nice one. You, you got one too? Yeah. Huh? Got the pole. There. there. Oh. You got one too? No. no. Not yet. Thank you. 
got it, baby. You got it, baby. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. <laughs> Woo! Yeah. Yeah, huh? Man. Oh, you got it? Oh, nice balance. She's got it. Athletic, huh? Here we can put this butt on if you want to put it in your head. You need that butt, baby, or you're good? What? You're gaining, you're gaining. Yeah, you look got him. Come on, crank him, crank him, crank him. Crank him, crank, 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 crank. Right. Keep forcing him. Crank him, crank him, crank him. Yank up on him. Turn that head. <laughs> Come on, baby. You got it. You got it, baby. Come on. Crank, 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 crank. Don't lose light. Don't lose light. See it right there in the water. Come on. You got it, baby. Woo! These waves are intense. Horse him in, horse him in, crank him in. Keep cranking, pull and crank, pull and crank. <laughs> Come on. You almost got it, you almost got it, you almost got it. Almost got it. Hey. Wow. That's a Look at that. Thing. Hold him up. <laughs> <laughs> nice one. Oh, man. You got the female. That's a little bull there. Okay. Square head. Oh, yeah. oh wow. Head. fight fish and these and these waves are insane they're for us they're huge for an Oklahoma person but mixed with that it's a super strong fish the Mahi Mahi man crazy yeah. you gotta be a surfer man to stay on these boats I'm here holding on to a rail and Jay's over here just standing up, just riding away, oh, man. Look at all the mines. Oh my god. Oh yeah, I see him. Yeah, you can see him blue in there. Got the decoy out again. Now we're going for our second set past this, past this buoy. 
you can see these mahi mahi in the water they're blue tint just swimming with polarized glasses you can just see them swimming through here so when they come on us if they see us on the movie they're gonna come get us
a solid fish right here. Oh, dude, every time I pull, it takes, instead of taking line on you? Yeah. We lost the gaff. Almost got him, lost the gaff, came off, but it's floating, so we're gonna go pick up the gaff. Look at that board. Look at that. Oh wow, this fish is going everywhere. These are monsters. There it is right there. Okay, stop. 
Suckers will weigh you out, fight them in the waves, and make these strong, strong fish. It's mahi mahi. Wow. Fired up on the light stuff, and then we'll stick the second one once they get fired up on the heavy stuff. Another one, another one to hunt.
bunch got sick. Threw up how many times? Huh? A couple times. A couple, four or five times. All Poor this, thing. All at once. Oh. Mm -hmm. That's why we caught so many fish. Appreciate that. Take one for the team, baby. Box right there. These guys? Like that? Oh. Yeah. Cookie cutter shark. Cookie cutter shark? So they act like they're like um, a piece of dead bait, and then when the fish comes up to eat them, they'll swiggle around and they just have a little cookie cutter mouth. No way. Smash the mahi mahi. Now we're gonna bottom fish. They're down there. What makes this area special? Um, it's the ledge that we have here. So we've got two with seven ounce weights. So bottom fishing. Here's the opalu. Hook on top and his midsection. It's about a oh, it looks, feels like about a 40, 50 pound leader. About a 10 foot leader between this and then that. There's two seven ounce job shots. But uh, beauty, this alone, these are these are beautiful, beautiful, beautiful fish. You guys both surf? Huh? You guys both surfers? Yeah. yeah. Oh. <laughs> Here you go. You know you gotta name them. Should have just right in the corner of the mountain. Been on the line like that, they saw it right off. After all that, what was it? Bronze whaler. Brown, bronze whaler? Yeah. Bronze whaler, seven footer. Ooh. Look at that big 
That's the laziest shark I've ever seen in my life. You just like. Usually they come up to the surface. Oh, really? So. Yeah, when, once... when that happens, we usually identify on a shark, you know? Yeah, normally, like, a shark will bite and they just run straight up and they'll be like across the surface and you know it's a shark. But that guy. He was probably hooked weird. How much do you think he weighed? Species. That fish by a hundred and view is probably two hundred pounds. It just jumped out of the water. Oh dolphin. Coming up right here. Where are they? Dolphin? Dolphin. Oh, oh wow. Spinner dolphin. What's that? Spinner dolphin. Spinner. They're sleeping right now. Spinners are sleeping right now? Yeah, they're they're not turtles so though. What they're doing right now is you'll see them, they're always side by side. Um, at least when they're cruising and you're on the dolphin tours. They cruise like this, and what they'll do is they'll shut off shut off the insides of their brain. So they'll pair up like this and the insides they'll shut off their brain, they'll rest that side. Once that side is rest up, they'll switch sides and then they'll rest the other half of their brain. Really? Pretty cool. I've heard though that dolphins like it's not good if if if, if you so, we have a uh, one species of dolphin that shows up and they'll eat every piece of bait. Those are the rough tooth dolphins. Um, these are spinners, so they don't really mean anything as far as fish. Um, the ones that we really hunt down are the, the white nosed dolphins, with the actual porpoise. Um, if we find those in a thousand fathoms of water, normally they're holding tunas. What the tunas will do is they'll cruise below the porpoise. And every time the porpoise use that um, echolocation and they find bait, the tunas will come up and they'll eat all the bait, forcing the, tuna, uh, the dolphins to keep hunting. That way the tunas can keep feeding. They, they cruise together, but they compete. But um, yeah, the tunas will always sit below those, those white-nosed uh, porpoise. So it doesn't affect your fishing? No. Um, there's guys that fish on the west side, commercial and charter, like my other boat. He lives in the porpoise. Like he, he tracks them. They kind of do this route. Or sometimes they do it counterclockwise. Sometimes they cut. But there's like maybe eight fishermen out there that'll that'll religiously hunt that pile down and fish it every day of the year. But like I said, the dahis aren't here year round. Um, but if those dolphins are around, there there'll be stragglers with it. And those eight fishermen will call each other every night. Hey, I left them here. They're headed this direction, they should be here in the morning. And the next guy will go out in the morning, find them, and they'll call each other and they'll all fish them. There are certain boats where you go out there and you see them and guys will just dogpile them. Don't worry, Nick's a professional videographer. Oh, is he? Oh, is he? I didn't know that. No, I do video on the side man what a great trip alice and i out here we had a fabulous time out here in hilewa hawaii fishing for whatever bid today was mahi mahi we ended up with six i think the largest was about 30 pounds it was a big old cow i think the bull weighed maybe 28 pounds and man we had an incredible time out there in the ocean that ocean was humbling today it was 10 foot swells back and forth. I tell you what, like Nick and Jay, those two men did an incredible job guiding us and putting us on fish and they worked really, really hard. Man, if you're looking for a guide in Hawaii, you guys need to look up Jay and Nick. They were working for Pearl, uh, Pamela, Pamela Pearl, Pearl fishing. yeah, fishing charters. But those two men right there, I would ask for them specifically because they're really two really good dudes, really knowledgeable. Jay's won, I think he said three tournaments He's fished all over the world, so really, really cool. We had some amazing conversations about uh, fishing and, you know, learned a lot about mahi-mahi. Mahi-mahi, you know, those fish we caught today were only three to four months old because mahi-mahi is the fastest growing fish in the ocean, which that's incredible. And they are a strong fish. Their name actually means strong, strong. Mahi means strong. And they lived up to their name because, man, I tell you what, it was everything you know i've always seen these people on tv struggling with these fish and yada yada but man these fish just a 30 pounder was incredible i mean one would wear you out and man also i had we had a blast but hope you like this video if you did please up to the boom boys and we'll see you on our next adventure
Aloha from Hawaii. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.